When did you start to hear whispers that Manchester United were going to build a team? I think it was during that final year at Liverpool. There was a lot of talk, I think, as soon as women's football and football in general is very small and integrated and everyone talks about everything. Everyone knows everyone and there's always whispers. And I think they're, I can't remember exactly when it was, but someone was saying, oh, I think Manchester United are going to bring a team in. I was like, oh, that would be amazing. Um because there'd always been talk and in the media, it's always, well, why haven't they got a team yet? And they should have a team already. But I think when I first spoke to to Casey and, and, and to United, it was really well thought out. And yeah. it was kind of, they didn't want to create a team when it wasn't ready to be mm. perfect. It needed to be the right setup, the right training ground, the right facilities. They needed to have the right, infrastructure to have a successful women's team not just say oh we need to have a women's team and just have it kind of as a bit part on the mm -hmm. side it's got to be done the right way at the right time and and two years ago was the right time um I have known Casey for years she was my roommate of England for about 10 years or so obviously played with her at, at Arsenal at Chelsea at Manchester United yeah. well not at Manchester United at Liverpool and then so, so you were thinking, to... if she does not phone me, <laughs> yeah, if I don't get the call now, I've definitely done something wrong. Um, no, so obviously had a conversation with her before she'd got the job. Um, I knew that she was kind of applying for it or had been asked to apply. I'm not sure exactly how it worked, but yeah, said that I was definitely interested. She knew that I wasn't happy at Liverpool and was leaving. It was a kind of... It was a not a difficult choice, but at the same time was a difficult choice because at the time um, Phil Neville had just taken over England and I kind of wasn't sure whether I was in his thoughts or not in his thoughts. And to step down a league and to play in the championship for a season, I didn't know whether that would affect my England chances. Yeah. Um, but to join a club like Manchester United with the plans... That, that Casey had and the club had it was a no-brainer it was just yeah. such an amazing opportunity to be part of that couldn't really turn down even knowing that you'd be playing a league down for a season and what was not that I want to dwell on the Liverpool experience but you say that Manchester United did it when they were ready what was the difference in terms of the women's team being integrated in with the men's team how, how have you found the difference I think well, probably one of the biggest differences is there's not male staff and women's staff, like staff of the men's team and staff of the women's team. There's just Man United staff. So obviously coaching staff, like the assistant manager, all of that, that's for the women's team. But the media, the, the comms, the marketing, sponsorship, all of that kind of side, they're just Manchester United staff. So you're there as a Manchester United player. You're not there as a women's player. You're not kind of, oh, someone's coming in from the women's team and you're just kind of a bit part. Everything's integrated and you see all the media campaigns, the kit launches, um, sponsorship activation. The women are involved in everything. And I think that's really important, not just for the club and for the sponsors to, to feel that integration, but you feel more valued as a player. Yeah. You feel like you're part of something properly instead of just being a footballer that can say they play for that team. And... Yeah, I think Manchester United did it so, so well. But yeah, it's, it's definitely probably made other teams realise how step they should do things. Yeah. And it's, yeah, the, the game and the league has definitely stepped up a lot over the last couple of years. What was it like when, because it was a brand new team and you were a part of that, when the team were first together and you looked around and there it was, the first Manchester United women's team. That must have felt like a special moment. Yeah, well, I remember um, turning up on the first day because um, I was friends with a few players already. Mm -hmm. I knew a few of the girls. I think it was me, Amy Turner and Martha Harris all turned up together. We're like, we're meeting the car park and we walk over because we had to meet at Old Trafford. Nothing had been announced. Um, it was a few weeks before um, they were announcing any of the players. 
and we met here where we met together as players for the first time. We had no idea what other players were turning up. There'd been some rumours, they'd like such and such is signing, so is she. I was like, who's she? I never heard of her. And <laughs> as we turned up, I remember I was like, that's the next one. I was like, what's her name? Who's she? And it was kind of, it was such a weird situation. It must be so weird situation. for everybody to turn up and be on the first day of mm-hmm. the job together. Yeah. It doesn't happen very often. I know, it's it? like being kind of the new kid at school, but, but everyone's yeah. the new kid. <laughs> And because there were a lot of younger players um, that I hadn't met before, I kind of knew a few names, but I didn't necessarily know all the faces. It was great to come up because we went upstairs into one of the suites and tried all the new kit and did all the sizing. And then we had a tour of the ground and yeah, it was it was great to meet everyone, but it was also quite a, a surreal experience. I think Andy Cole did a, did a little chat with us about what it means to play for Manchester United and... I don't think until you come to the ground and are kind of given that chat and kind of hear about the history of the club, you don't really realise how big a club Manchester United is until you're actually in it. You know that if you watch TV, you watch football, you know Manchester United is a massive club. Until you're in it, you don't really realise exactly how big the club is. And to have those young girls with your names... Uh, on their backs as well was that a surreal moment for you going to the games and seeing that yeah I think as the the season progressed you saw kind of more and more girls on social media um getting their Manchester United shirts and having players names on the back I think I saw Jess Sigsworth there was someone at the one of the I, I Love United events over in China had a Sigsworth shirt and I remember she saw that and she was amazed. She was like, wow, this is this is crazy. Uh-huh. And it is to think that people all over the world know who you are and are supporting you. And, and Jane following an expensive games. one though, I have I to know. say. Well, I remember <laughs> <laughs> my um, my cousin's little boy is a goalkeeper and he's a Manchester United supporter. And they went on the online store and tried to buy a shirt with my name on it. And it said that I had one letter too many to be able oh, to get, oh it on no. the, get it on the shirt. So he was like, can you fix this for me? So I managed to get it sorted and, and uh-huh. he, he managed to get a shirt. But yeah, it's it's not the most <laughs> ideal of names to have on the back of a shirt. It's I did actually threaten the um, kit man when I got married that I was going to go double barreled. And <sighs> yeah, he, he lost the plot. He's like, no chance. That's amazing. <laughs> it can't have been long after that you were pregnant with baby Amelia? Yeah. Obviously, I don't want to go into the dates. I don't know what... <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it wasn't long afterwards. And I kind of... I remember when I found out that I was pregnant, my very first thought after being obviously excited and mm-hmm. telling my husband... Actually, probably before I told my husband, I thought, oh my God, how the hell am I going to tell Casey? <laughs> <laughs> because it wasn't... I, I knew that I wanted to have children. It wasn't... That wasn't a question, but... I'd never made a decision that was that, was, time that was when yeah. and kind of it was, it's a difficult situation as a female footballer kind of you have a short career span but if you want to have children it's kind of how it's logistically it's, right it's a bit of a nightmare yeah. we talked and about maternity leave and paternity leave early, didn't we and saying you know everybody wants that and everybody's entitled to that but of course as an athlete it's not just the maternity leave afterwards. It's everything before because you you can't you can't go and goal when you're six months <laughs> pregnant. No, well, I think the doctor said something to me like you need the force of something that's going to shatter your pelvis to do any damage in the first twelve weeks. I remember thinking I don't really even want to think about that, uh, <laughs> that kind of damage. And I faced Leah Galton and LJ's shots. They're probably that kind of force, um, but obviously the. I I was kind of injured anyway Mm -hmm. and it was off season so those those first few weeks wasn't really an issue with 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 training wise so I wasn't training anyway but um yeah I remember thinking that I needed to have that conversation with Casey and I obviously trusted her completely like she was she's a really good friend of mine as well as being my manager um so it was kind of hard because I was only like six or seven weeks pregnant not very long Mm -hmm. not very far gone at all and I hadn't told my parents we hadn't told family you don't tell anyone until you're kind of 12 weeks or so but I knew that I kind of owed it to her and the team to let her know because as a goalkeeper especially if she wanted to bring someone else in Mm -hmm. um I needed to give her that opportunity and yeah I was 
remember being quite emotional and very nervous on that, <laughs> that phone call to her. I, I needn't have been because I knew that as a friend, especially like as a friend, she'd have been happy for me, but I wasn't sure what her response would have been as a manager, but she was, she was, she was great. And said that obviously her and the club would support me um, in every way that I needed them to be. And yeah, the club were great with that. So you have hung up your boots, you say, well, do you think there could be a chance there could be a Paul Scholes in you and you, six months time you think oh. oh my husband will probably say <laughs> no look you've said you've retired yeah, you've that's retired. It. I don't know I've kind of I don't want to go back to playing football but not being as good as I know I can be okay, I think that yeah. was part of my thing of I trained for a while over over pre-season this summer and trained like twice a week with a club and they were keen on on me signing but training twice a week wasn't going to get me to where I knew that I should be or wanted to yeah. be I don't want to go back and start making mistakes and not be the best that I can be because ultimately you're only kind of as good or remembered by by your last game and if I then start making mistakes oh, she's not very good and then you lose what you've had before I'd rather step away winning the championship playing in playing in world cups playing yeah. in European championships and and remember my career for that than coming back and saying do you remember when she let that one through her yeah. hands in, <laughs> in a boggy pitch on a Sunday afternoon when no one was really caring about the game yeah. so it's yeah. although never say never I suppose no. 